Okay, at first I have to say I'm so glad to finally meet you. Oh, thank you. For this interview. I hope this is not the last time. Uh -huh. <laughs> Tell me, what, um, why did it take you so long to release an album? Um, well, the process of writing this album um, has gone on through quite a difficult time in my life where I um, uh, went through a fairly long depression, which created writer's block, mm -hmm. which I kept thinking I'd recovered from and then I would hit a wall again. So in other words, when, um, well firstly, uh, when I realized that I'd, re I'd hit writer's block, I then went and recorded um, an album of uh, standards called Songs from the Last yes. Century. Yeah. Um, because I realized that if I was not going to be writing for a while, then it would, one, it would be nice to have something out there for my um, audience, and two, it would be nice to make progress for myself in another area, i.e. my singing. Yeah. And, um, and I do think that shows that, that making that record uh, informs this record a little in terms of my vocal style. But also, every time um, I would be optimistic and I felt I was writing again, for instance, when uh, Freak came out, I thought that the album would be ready for that, the end of that year. Mm -hmm. And that and was, then I hit, uh, and that was that was two thousand two. Two thousand, yeah. I think so. Yeah, I think so. Or and, late uh, two thousand one. And um, early two thousand two. You're right. And then, of course, when uh, Shoot the Dog came out, I thought the album was going to be ready then. <laughs> And I really did. I just kept kept thinking it was over, and then it wouldn't be over. But this last year, I've written constantly, and uh, and the majority of the really personal um, work on the album is the result of the last year's work, which has been constant, and I've really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. Tell me some things about patience. Uh, what, for example, inspired you for making some tracks? Ah, oh, different inspirations. I think the. Um, the album divides into two halves. Um, the first half of the lyrical writing of the album um, took place between 1999 and 2003. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it is written, a lot of it is commentary on things that I see happening in the modern world. But it, it's not really attached to myself, i.e. the, 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 um, the lyrics to shoot the dog or Precious Box or Freak, um, which are really not, they're really not, they're third person lyrics, they're really not about me. And then, and that really was because I didn't have the strength to look inside to write. And then once I got my confidence back and my strength back and I was enjoying the music and enjoying the whole process for the first time in many years, um, then I had the courage to look inwards and write a little more about what I'd learned about my family history and, mm -hmm. uh, and how that has shaped my life, you know. So the second half of, of those lyrics were all composed in the last year of my life. Do you know what's going to be the next single or you're still...? Uh, I'm still trying to work it out, really. I think, obviously, for the clubs, um, the flawless... Yeah. Uh, would be would be a big also precious box is fantastic yeah but I think precious box I I may wait a little and it might be next year because I have an amazing video idea mm -hmm. for that and uh, and that would take some real organization and um, I think we don't have time for that before we need a, ne a second single I hope um, John and Elvis are dead maybe as I a also double liked uh, cars and trains yeah I think it's very good yeah I'm kind of stuck for singles I'm actually there are lots of them that mm -hmm. I think deserve to be yeah. singles yeah which is the kind of that's really the way I tried to write the album even though it's very personal I've tried to write a lot of it for the radio is it true that uh, from now on all of your next albums will not be in the shops and the record stores but only through internet um, well it's not really from now on it's it's once my obligation to Sony is fulfilled, which is basically this album and a couple of tracks for a duets album that they want to release at the end of that next year. That was my next question, okay. So that's not a rumor. So, no, that is the truth, but that, um, uh, even if I decided to give my half away, I don't think Sony would give their half away. But that, uh, so, so it's really this album 
and the tracks for the duets album that I'm committed to Sony mm -hmm. for. And then anything beyond that, um, in other words, the next uh, group of songs that I write, because I think I've pretty much already got the two songs for the duets album, they're songs that didn't make it onto um, Patience. Uh, and in truth, we actually ran out of space on Patience because we got to like 71 minutes and you can only yeah. get 72 minutes on a disc. So there are a couple of good songs left over from that. And, um, but basically, in the future, there won't be commercial releases as such. I'll be um, opening a, a website where people can come and download my music for free. And while they're there, they have an option in exchange for the download to make a donation. donation. But they don't have to. So really mean people can go there and get their, their music for free. And uh, That's great. really generous people can go there and download my music and make a donation to a charity of their choice, you know. That's, that's fantastic. And it's also a way of being able to put music out there to my immediate audience uh, when and as it happens, mm -hmm. rather than having to, the pressure of, of to make a collection of songs by a certain date that has to live up to your back catalogue. Yeah. You know, I think it might be a really exciting way of of freeing up my um, songwriting. When was the last time that you visited Greece, if there was a time? I've never been to mainland Greece. I went to Corfu. To Corfu. I've never been to mainland Greece. My father being Greek Cypriot, uh, I, uh, I didn't get to go to Greece. Although I have an auntie that lives in Greece. Mm -hmm. um, but I would love to go. I'd really love to go. I mean, obviously, my next... Um, if there's a tour, which is kind of like that, but if there's a tour, then obviously Greece will be in there, of course. Maybe there's a good chance now with the Olympic uh, Games this summer. Yeah, but they didn't, you see, they haven't called me back. <laughs> they haven't called me back about that, and I have a horrible feeling they're too busy finishing the building. <laughs> uh, don't say that, don't say that. Do you speak any Greek or not? Uh, no, I just know those, <clears throat> I just know those swear words that my mother would very conveniently use with us as children whenever we were around English people and she wanted to tell us off. She would, know, she would take the words that she knew that my dad would teach her and she would tell us off in Greek. So most of the, the words I know include some, some element of, uh, uh, what's the word, uh, punishment or blame to them. No, it's okay if you, don't, if you don't remember. So there's a, a small chance to make a tour maybe this year. Yeah, not? it would be, to be honest, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be this year. It would be a little later than that. But, um, yeah, there's a, a, a definite chance of it, yeah. Great, because how many years? Uh, oh, it's many years since I toured since at all. a decade. Yeah, and since a proper tour, an actual George Michael tour, a it proper one. Um, it was from the Faith album, I yeah, think. Yeah, which is the Faith tour. That's 1988, so that's wow. 16 years ago. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Do you ever the get... bones the... are creaking in comparison. <laughs> Do you ever get nostalgic about the early days, about the 80s, the, the one days, or not? Um, I don't think I've ever really get nostalgic because I think, although my, my early life was... My early, ad, um, my early career mm -hmm. was absolutely blessed, I wasn't a particularly happy individual mm -hmm. in comparison to the man I am today. Yeah, of course. So it's very difficult to be nostalgic about my own life at that period. But I, I am nostalgic for, um, I guess, uh, the camaraderie of it, really. And the fact that I was having fun with people I'd known, you know, since my school days and stuff. Tell me, how do you feel? when you listen to Last Christmas, every Christmas, I mm -hmm. think this song is the most definitely classic Christmas song. Mm -hmm. I suppose you could not imagine the success no. that it would have through the years. No, it's no, no, I never had, I never impact. imagined that. I, I did think, actually, my one, I was overconfident about that year, because in 1984, I had a plan, you know, I was only, I was only, um, 21 years old, but I, oh no, I was 20 actually, and I had this plan that Wham were going to have four number one singles in Britain mm -hmm. by Christmas, and the plan included um, Waiting awesome. Up Before You Go Go and Freedom and... Everything She Wants. Uh, uh, no, free, Wake Me Up Before You Go Go, Freedom and... Uh, what I was the third one? No, it was the second one. No, Careless Whisper, of course. 
Because I, I knew I from the make it big album. Yeah. Yeah. So it was it was Wake Me Up Before You Go Go, Careless Whisper, Freedom, and then. I knew I had this Christmas song, which I was confident by then would be number one. And of course, it never happened because it was the biggest selling num uh, number two record of all time in the UK because of uh, Band Aid. A Band Aid the Night's Christmas. So I got it wrong that year, but I never dreamed. Uh, yeah. I never dreamed it would be, be played as much as it is now. So, what's your idea of fun? What do you do when you have a free time? Do you like go clubbing? Uh, I can't really go clubbing. It's a little bit too too difficult for me, really, these days. And anyway, most clubs I go to, uh, you know, I don't really want to dance to the music. I like ultimately, I like funk music, mm -hmm. and I'm not really that sure how uh, how much fun there is dancing to uh, four on the floor yeah. <laughs> all night. If we could uh, turn back time mm -hmm. from uh, the one like days share. until now. Is there something that you would uh, you wouldn't do? Ah. Uh, well, I suppose I shouldn't regret anything because I'm very happy where I am now. But of course, it would be really nice if you could go back and change the hair a bit and and, and uh, <laughs> get rid of the shorts and stuff like that. But you know, such is life. The, the part of the part of the um, I think part of the reason that my relationship with the public feels like a real relationship is because in, in part before the advent of stylists per se, you know, you watched someone growing up mm -hmm. in the clothes that they wore, in the mistakes that they made, whatever, you know. And I think the public has very definitely, they saw me grow up and, and that probably wouldn't happen it's so, it's so apparently today because you'd be styled, I would have been styled from day one, so I never would have looked such a fool. Yeah. <laughs> Your base is still in Britain, in the UK? Yeah, yeah London. London. You live, uh, your base is there. Mm -hmm. What do you think of the charts these days in the UK? Well, the album chart is quite healthy. The, the singles chart is kind of irrelevant, really, now mm -hmm. to anything. It doesn't even make anybody any money. Um, but the album chart, because the singles charts uh, um, are not, you know, the bands that they're aiming at children are not producing any, any return, um, the album chart kind of came alive after the Nora Jones album and uh, people are looking for, um, they're looking for album sellers again, which is a good thing, you mm -hmm. know. So... Right now you're talking to the Mad uh, TV viewers and all your fans in Greece. Mm -hmm. Do you have something to say to them that are watching you right now? I'm mad, me. <laughs> uh, do I have anything to say to them? Um, just to uh, thank them all, as usual, for uh, being patient and waiting for me to uh, come up with this album. You know, the albums. That's why you called it Patience, right? Well, two reasons. There's the reason, one, that I have the most patient fans on the planet, and uh, two, because I think patience is the most important word in all of our vocabulary right now. Are you a patient guy? In some ways, yes. As a driver, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay.